Hey, welcome back to Girl Chat Sports. We are on episode 36, and when I tell you to just stay tuned and listen, because we have an excellent guest coming on this afternoon or this evening. Um, welcome. I'm Melissa, one of your hosts, of course. And I'm Stephanie. And we have got Reggie Watkins from Franchise Sports coming on later um, in the podcast, so please stay tuned for that. We'll be talking um, some championship um, uh, college football, Alabama and Clemson. We'll talk um, Odell Beckham Jr., the Giants, uh, the new Big Three Basketball League, the Ice Cube, has started um, along with Alan Iverson, who's going to be taking part in it, um, and a couple other little things we'll touch on, as well as Grace and Alan from Duke. So, anyways, we'll get right into it with the NFL. It, I'm still sad. Stuff like, not only is my president leaving, but now the NFL only has about three more weeks left. Coming to a close. It's a sad. January is going to be really sad. February is going to be even worse. So last weekend with the um, NFL Wild Card Weekend, um, we had the Texans beat the Raiders, uh, Seahawks of course beat the Lions at home, which was amazing. Um, Reg, uh, Reggie, because Reggie's coming on later. Russell Wilson actually had um, shed his leg brace this game, and he had worn out pretty much all season since he started. Since he injured it and sprained his knee, um, he had a great game. Um, Paul Richardson, can we talk about the one hand catches? I don't know if Odell Beckham Jr. morphed into Paul Richardson for this weekend because we all know that the Giants lost to the Packers. ODBJ Jr. Um, basically to make any catches, whereas Paul Richardson not only had had two one-handed catches, one for a touchdown, but then he also had some other one that was like almost behind the back, underneath, and then um, Doug Baldwin had a great one like that too. So it was just crazy. But really Paul impressive. Richardson, I mean, that one-handed grab in the end zone, yes, there was a face mask, and for all those Lions fans out there, even without the touchdown, we still would have beat you. Okay, let's <laughs> let's just be clear on that. <laughs> um, and then Baldwin, of course, had his body catch, which was awesome as well. He immediately had Pete Carroll challenging that right after, like, no, 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 I had that. It was all mine. And he did. He had it. So um, Steelers beat the Dolphins. I don't think there was much surprise there. Um, I still don't understand why they left Laroethlisberger in there the entire game. I'm not sure either. And it sounds, you know, he did get hurt. It sounded like that third or fourth quarter a little bit. They think his leg is going to be fine coming towards this weekend. Um, but, yeah, we, I, I, I don't know why they did either. It was kind of a kill of a game. Um but Le- Levon, Le'Veon Bell had, like, a monster game. I mean, this guy, right now, did you know he's only making 852000 a year? Huh. Yeah, this is one of the top running backs in the league, and who basically today has stated how to Bleacher Report that he's basically the Steph Curry of the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> But he is set to look into a possible franchise tag after the season. He can get upwards of like $12 million. I mean, he's coming into a paycheck, definitely. But he had 10 straight carries lead the Steelers to a 20-6 to six at halftime. At halftime, they were 20-6. to six. So, yeah, it would have been nice. Um, of course, that's it for the Dolphins. Tannehill was out. Their offensive um, – uh, Pittsburgh offensive line dominated. It was it was just incredible. So and then of course uh, Packers over the Giants. <sighs> the Giants, man. I th- I've never seen so many drop. It was like raining balls there, literally, because they're just dropping everybody that I think got a pass thrown at them was being dropped, unless you worked for the Packers and were catching hail marys left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aaron Rodgers is amazing. This man, 362 yards, uh, four touchdowns. This is their seventh straight win, and they're heading into where? Well, they're going to lose to the Cowboys <laughs> this weekend. We're yeah. favored to win, by the yeah. way. It's well, going to be a good game. It'll be a good game. The only thing is that I'm, even for me, um, if the Packers were coming to Seattle, even with our championship squad a couple years ago, Aaron Rodgers is not someone that you want to just take out the pick. I mean, he's gonna he literally could change the game at the last minute. Literally. Like Clemson did in the last second, that's Aaron Rodgers. So Depends on which Aaron Rodgers shows up. True. However, for seven straight games, he's been the Aaron Rodgers. So. Man, the Patriots have it easy. Man, the Patriots. 
I just hope someone chokes over on I just, I don't, like I said before, I'll say it again, I don't ever wish injury on anybody. However, if someone on the Patriots were to not make it past this, past this divisional round, I'd be pretty excited. I'd be okay with that, too. <laughs> I bet you would, too. <laughs> so, um, this coming weekend, we've got more Saturday games, of course. We've got the Texans at the Patriots, um, Seahawks in Atlanta for the Falcons game. Um, this actually is going to be Tom Brady's second regular season worth of playoffs. So literally he's had um, 32 playoff games that he started in, which is basically two seasons of starts. They're favored by 15 and a half points to win. <laughs> and also Tom Brady was in, um, basically in, a, in the league when most of the quarterbacks right now were in high school. So, <laughs> What is he, 37 years old and yeah. still doing his thing? Man, you can't stop him. It's like he just drank from the fountain of youth or Giselle. I mean, um, so <laughs> Sunday they got the Steelers, the Chiefs, and of course the Packers at the Cowboys. Hey, we're getting healthy. We're going to have cornerback Morris Claiborne back. We're going to have Tyrone Crawford, Demarcus Lawrence, and Terrell McLean all available to play on Sunday. We will be happy to have them. Mm-hmm. Let's see how it goes rocking at Jerry's house. So it'll be a huge, um, you know, a huge weekend. But more closer to home here in Las Vegas, uh, there was a big update in the Raiders' move to Vegas. Steph, breaking news. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we met with stadium, or they met with stadium committee. You can say we, it's okay. <laughs> We're already claiming them. <laughs> we. Uh, there was a meeting in New York City today to sort out how the Raiders may or may not move to Vegas. Um, and uh, apparently what the discussion was is whether or not Sheldon Adelson will still stay in it as a financial supporter. Oh. Apparently uh, the owner of the Steelers, Rooney, noted that uh, in the rules of the NFL, uh, casino owners can't own any part of the franchise. <gasps> really? So, and, you know, with him putting right. all that money all down, that money eventually down. he probably will want a stake in the team. So mm. they may move with him without him going forward. I'm not sure where. Would that be a bigger cost to us here in Las Vegas? Though, would I go? Wonder? I don't know. Ooh. But, I mean, everything seemed to come out fairly positive. Uh, the Patriots owner tweeted even before uh, the meeting uh, that uh, he's on board with the Raiders. Um, and then even after the meetings, there was quite a few tweets from um, the NFL vice president saying that the Raiders have made a Las Vegas deal that looks really impressive. Um, so I think that uh, we're getting closer. Did they mention anything about like when the final vote's going to be? or So they have to propose uh, to the 32 owners March 26th in Arizona. Um, so that will be the... Uh, final day. I guess there's just a lot of things uh, moving the team to Vegas. They were looking at it like, are they going to be able to do the ticket sales mm -hmm. here? Uh, not to mention the gambling. So I guess mm -hmm. there was a few things that uh, made uh, moving the market address, here. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, we'll definitely we'll keep you posted on some information regarding that. Um, also, we got a little bit of a college basketball news. Um, later, we're going to talk a little bit about that with our guest, but. Um, there was a couple of interesting games that happened recently, right, Steph? Yeah, last night, actually, uh, number nine, West Virginia, upset Baylor, who was number one. Um, it was actually their first loss of the season. They had wow. 16 first-half turnovers. And this is actually a record, the largest loss ever by any team debuting at number one. That actually dropped Baylor down to number eight in the top 25. Also, a game last night, number seven, Duke lost to uh, Florida State, uh, who was number nine. Um, they actually have 12 wins in a row, FSU, right now, which is a school record. Um, and uh, I will say that Duke's captain was out of a foot injury, and uh, Coach K was out for back <laughs> surgery, so of course they didn't have both of them. Um, but I think the Blue Devers, Devils were lucky to stay with the nation's 14th-ranked scoring team. Uh, but that did drop Duke down to a number 11 and moved up FSU to number 6. Uh, so quite a big change in the top 10. It's definitely a big change. And then also in regards to women's um, college hoops, UConn's women's squad tied its own record, <laughs> NCAA Division One record, because they have 90 consecutive wins last night. 
90 wow. consecutive. Like, these women just dominate. And, you know, what's funny is that the Seattle Storm have gotten a couple of the UConn um, women, which is probably why we've made a couple championships in regards to that. But um, And also, begging, bringing it back to Seattle, because, of course, I'm always going to wrap things around Seattle anyway, um, the University of Washington women's basketball team, who were in the Final Four last year, currently at number 8 in the top 25, and they are ranked number 2 in the Pac-12. Kelsey Plum, an amazing baller. Um, she was actually ESPN's uh, women's player of of the week this week. Very nice. So congratulations to Kelsey. And then moving on to a little bit of basketball news, um, Derek Rose played hooky for a little bit. <laughs> Disappear. A no call, no show, if you will. You know, we all know in the working world, no call, no show is some serious repercussions. And basically you should be in the hospital pretty much um, in a coma if there's a no call, no show. I don't think that his mental state is that great right now. He even briefly talked about walking away from the game for an extended period of time. So I don't know if it was family issues, as he had mentioned. Uh, I just don't think that uh, his head is right right now. Right. Well, we know he misses his family in Chicago. Um, That's, of course, where he was traded from, the Bulls. Uh, And it sounds like he's having some issues with the coach, um, Hornacek. Uh, You know, I I can't speak on any of that. But he did make it back uh, a day later and I believe started tonight, supposedly. So hopefully we'll see how it goes. Um, Clearly he did get fined. I'm not sure how much more punishment he will receive from that. But hopefully whatever is wrong gets better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The other interesting thing, there was a huge trade that started off, um, I guess not started off, but it's kind of bringing bringing in the the trade deadline for the NBA. The deadline for the NBA is next month, February 23rd. Kyle Korver was traded from Atlanta to the Cavs. This is one incredible guard. He's an all-time shooter, like crazy, crazy skills. Yeah, and it almost didn't happen because Mike Dunleavy didn't want to leave. <laughs> Who can blame him? <laughs> I mean, leave should, leave Cleveland, sure, but leave the Cleveland Cavs? Yeah, probably not. But I guess the Hawks had a nice talk with him and mm. meant and told him that they actually meant that he meant something to them, um, and he decided to go. So Corver started uh, last night uh, when uh, the Cavs played Utah. He mm-hmm. only scored two points and the Cavs <laughs> lost. Dang. I mean, here's the deal. The Cavs had a bunch of people injured, a bunch of people on the bench. Mike Dunleavy wasn't doing so much. Well, wasn't really doing a whole lot for them recently. So I understand the trade. Hopefully Kyle Corver gets in the swing of things. I mean, here you, you just get traded and you're being thrown into a game. So you got to have a few practices and understand the plays, get um, understanding of you and your co- co-workers like LeBron James. <laughs> you know, you got to share that ball with him too. So it should be interesting. It's definitely something to look out for because obviously it's kind of like this competition between the Warriors and the, and, and the Cavs as to who else they can bring on their team to dominate. First it was KD the, over the summer. Now we've got this trade. So we'll see if anything else crazy goes on in the NBA before the trade deadline. Speaking of crazy news Uh in the NBA, Uh did you hear that Kevin Garnett has officially signed on as a consultant with the L.A. Clippers? (laughs) You know, I did actually see that, and although he won't be traveling or sitting on the bench, he will be apparently helping out with maybe some post moves or something. Yeah, well, (laughs) and even uh, Chris Paul is doing his thing right now. He passed Rod Strickland into the 10th place on the NBA's all-time assist list and passed Isaiah Thomas for 15th place on the all-time steals list. The what? Isaiah Thomas? Oh, Yeah, and then Rockets, they're on fire right now. James Harden is on fire fire right now. Yeah, he just became the fourth player in NBA history to put up 40 point triple doubles in consecutive games. He is reaching for that MVP. And he is the only player, I think, no, he's one of four players in NBA history to get both, to get 40 points or more and a triple double in, in the game. I mean, that's just it. It's insane. The Rockets are 20-2 and two since December 1st. And it's funny because I posted on Girl Chat about this. So I was like, I wonder if this is because he dumped Khloe Kardashian prior to it affecting his lifestyle. Right. But who did she move on to? Someone from the Cavs. Yeah. And maybe that's why they're losing. <laughs> <laughs> Heed our warning, Cleveland Cavaliers. Stay away from the Kardashians. Stay away from the Kardashians. Look at Kanye. <laughs> Um, last little tip of the basketball news. Um, I had no idea about this, but 
because we've been going over the whole Vegas um, Raiders thing and the, and the stadiums being built and the cost, they were showing, you know, about the Raiders wanting to stay at home, but they were mentioning the Oracle Arena. I didn't know Oracle Arena was the, the oldest arena in, in, in the NBA right now. I actually was there last year, and it looked, I thought it looked like a new, not new, but like a fairly new arena, which was odd. So they actually have a new arena being built um, that should, I think it's supposed to open like next year or something. So it's really weird. I had no idea. Nice. Odd. Yeah. So um, anyways, we're going to take a break real quick. We'll come back with our guest and we'll be right back. This is Melantha with a spoon with Take a Trip Travel. And we love to plan family vacations, honeymoons, girlfriend getaways with a great deal of experience with group travel and destination weddings. We can be reached at 314-369-7025 or take trip travel at gmail.com. That is T-A-K-E-T-R-I-P-T-R-A-B-E-L at gmail.com. Hey, and welcome back. We are joined with our special guest, Mr. Reggie Watkins, a.k.a. Franchise Sports. What's going on, Reggie? I'm good. I'm good. What's cracking, Lakes? How y'all doing? Hey, we can't You're complain, well. right? <laughs> we can't complain. We can't. It's been a nice day out here in Vegas. I know that was almost 70 in some spots, so we cannot complain at all. Oh, man, I know. I yeah. can't. I, I love Vegas. It's- my favorite. And the crazy thing when I was when I retweeted and reposted mm-hmm. uh, your guys' photo on Instagram, all of a sudden all the Vegas promoters started hitting me up. <laughs> I, 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 didn't even know, I, I forgot that you guys were in Vegas, so it's dope. Now maybe I, I might get a free room or or I can get into the club for free. There you go. See perks already. There's perks already. already. <laughs> <laughs> well, please um, let our it, listeners know kind of about who you are, what you got going on. Um, obviously, the franchise sports um, social media, um, your your podcast, as well as I, I know I touched on a little bit that we kind of noticed you were an actor as well, which was awesome. Some of my favorite shows I think I saw in a part of the uh, mentions. But yeah, give us a little a little bit of uh, Reggie Watkins one hundred and one. Well, I am a uh, you know, I am a podcaster, uh, talking sports with the franchise. You can catch it on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, PunchDrunkSports.com, the number two comedy sports podcast on the internet because number one is talking sports with the franchise. Follow very closely <laughs> my girl Chad Sports. Right, Follow very closely. Um, but uh, you know you catch me there. Uh, my Instagram at franchise sports with a Z, Black Barbershop. And on uh, Twitter at franchise sports with a Z, but I just talk real, man. You know, what I mean, I, I I talk about the sports I'm passionate about, which is NFL, college football, basketball. I dabble in a little bit of baseball, and um, I just recently started getting into hockey a little bit and soccer. It ain't never gonna happen. But um, <laughs> so I I just love talking about you know talking about sports. I do it for you know all day. I've been doing it since I was a kid, and um, you know I, I, I am an actor by trade. So on my free time, you know, right now I am an out-of-work actor, but in my free time, I like to do the podcast, and I do it every week, and, um, you know, we produce the show, and I'm on Twitter all the time and on Instagram all the time talking and just posting and just engaging, and it's what I love to do. That Speaking awesome. of engaged, we hear congratulations are in order. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it is, yeah. We're a sucker for love, so we appreciate um, that. So congratulations on your engagement. Uh, we wanted Thank to ask you. you, since we heard that both hometown heroes, Chris Bryant from the Cubs and Bryce Harper uh, from the Nationals, recently got married, uh, one of them last weekend and the other last month, to their high school sweethearts. And we want to oh. know your thoughts on prenups. Especially in wow, this situation. This is, so, this is so close to home. <laughs> I just had this conversation um, <laughs> with somebody the other day about prenups because I had a family member going through that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, for me personally, me and my, my lady, there is no prenup talk involved. And I don't, I don't agree with prenups on certain occasions. For, for me, I think it's more when you, when you person has their own individual wealth, um, you don't deal with a prenup because basically I think you're going into that saying this might not work out. And in case mm-hmm. it don't work out, you can't get none of this money. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, I don't trust you to have this. But I had a conversation with a guy who, you know, has his wealth is tied up in a family and people are affected by it. So he was like, yo, if I get divorced from, from this lady, she now becomes 
part of this pie of people who have worked hard and got this money that she wasn't involved with. So I think there's, it's, it's, there's two ways of looking at it. For me, I'm not about the prenup, but I can understand somebody being about that. You're a brand new professional uh, <laughs> baseball player about starting to get some real money. Uh, what would you do in that situation? If that's me, I got to let it ride. Yeah. I mean, if you love the girl, you know, or you, if you love the girl or the dude, you know, hey, right. 2017, every dude got to be politically correct, right? Well, if until the 20th. Him, I mean, <laughs> 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 Jesus. If you love him or her, you got to be, you got to ride for him. And, you know, I mean, you got to put it out there. And I feel like if you tell somebody, hey, I love you, but just not in this area, you're setting it up for failure and you're putting it in somebody's mind that maybe this ain't going to work out. Right. And I also, I think me personally, I'm thinking, you know, these are their high school sweethearts. These are people that knew them before the money even came. So, I mean, exactly. for that point, it's kind of like, well, you've been here. You knew me when I was broke, when I wasn't doing nothing, when I was at high school lunches, going to McDonald's. So we're good. But now sometimes I see like but these girls I, I, on, just, just, huh? Just, just, just for the record, I, I don't think Bryce and, um, and Chris were ever uh, broke. Um, oh no I don't think they're broke um, and they did go to some good high schools out here but you know I mean it, I wouldn't say that they were they didn't have the money they have now yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Well, but then my other point, you know, on, you know, devil's advocate side of that is I watch these shows like basketball. I don't watch them personally anymore because they drive me crazy, but like basketball wives and all that kind of stuff. And you think about these girls that literally go into a club or go into a, um, a sporting event, you know, trying to catch these men and maybe succeed and catch them. And now they're just trying to get the big check, the big payoff. Temptations. Too many temptations oh, when you're famous. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, all day. But at the end of the day, you got to get caught. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, if they got caught, then they got caught. So <laughs> it's on the fellas, too. They got to go in there with a, you know, a, a good peace of mind and understand, yo, this is, you know, what I'm worth now. This is what people are going to be looking at. And it's a tough business because once you get to that kind of level of success and you got that kind of money, I mean, the world just breeds people out here looking to come grab that. So you've got to be on your P's and Q's even more when you get that money. Most definitely. So let's turn back the clock a couple days to the national championship between Clemson and Alabama. Now, did you watch the game? Oh, of course. <laughs> okay, of course. okay, okay. Oh, I had, I, had, I, had, I had money. Well, hold on. I can't say I had money because we in Vegas. So Y'all in Vegas. Um, a cousin of mine had some money. On oh, no, we can bet here. We bet. What are you talking <laughs> oh, about? He's in California. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the rules are. I mean, I had, yeah, so uh, I had money on a parlay. I actually won my parlay, parlay because Clemson – covered the plus seven that I got it at and oh man I was watching that game highs and lows screaming at the TV hiding my eyes I was so excited when we when they pulled it out I'm saying we now because I feel like I'm one with Clemson right <laughs> right but, uh, I, I mean I, it was just it was a great game amazing game I mean I think it's right there next to hell last year's game was great but I think it's even better than last year and close to 2005 USC versus Texas National Championship Rose Bowl game Ooh, the Rose. I mean, I, this game for me, I mean, literally all you really had to do was watch the fourth quarter. It was, I mean, you could, my, one of my friends well, yesterday was like, well, I think I'm going to watch it again. It was so good. I'm like, just watch the fourth. I mean, the fourth quarter was like pins and needles both ways. Of course, I was going for Clemson because my team, the Huskies, lost to Alabama. So I was like, karma sucks because you killed us. Someone's going to hurt you. So. <laughs> you hating. You, you, you hating. Let's call it. You hating. Pretty you, much. I, I mean, you know, so I had already made a bet and lost against Alabama on my game. So, you know, I'm trolling every Rolling Tide fan I know, you know, talking all the mess on social media. Um, but I was really excited for Clemson. I was really happy. I mean, here's the deal is that Hurts is a great freshman quarterback. I mean, true freshman, he's in his first year playing, and he's in a championship bowl game, A. But the next thing is that there's nothing. Deshaun Watson, I mean, he had a 463 yards. This man is a beast. It was was ridiculous they were already they were down at halftime they come back and win 35 to 1. i mean I, I i literally with one second left one second so it wasn't like you know yeah. you won with like a minute left and there was some time to kill they literally were about to lose with like less than two minutes and with one second left they're winning i mean it was crazy and what was crazier even today i saw there was a news or a social media post that showed the crowd or i guess lack thereof that was showing up to support the guys getting off the plane from um in alabama and there was like literally 10 people there 
oh, sad. Literally yeah, well, 10 people. <laughs> so all those yeah, Roll Tide yeah. fans rolled on. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> it was so bad I couldn't believe it but hey you know and I, I mean yeah it was amazing so um one yeah, thing no, great game. what were you gonna say no go ahead um yeah great game I, I I loved the game I thought it was you know especially that like you said that fourth quarter was just riveting um but I you know you hear all these people talking about it and, you know there's so many people were picking Alabama before the game. Like, oh, Alabama's mm-hmm. got the greatest defense of all time. But the greatest defense of all time gets tired. And what happened in that game was Clemson had the ball the entire second half. Yeah. I mean, Jalen Hurts not being able to pass the ball killed Alabama. I mean, I don't care how great your defense is. If the offense can't get first down and you end up turning the ball over and giving it back to Clemson, they, they just could not sustain that. And what happened was, you know, Clemson just outlasted them, and they got that dub. And, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for Deshaun Watson. And, and the boy played, I mean, amazing. I mean, back-to-back years of playing great football at, at that high of a level. I mean, he's got to be one of the greatest college quarterbacks that we've ever seen. Well, going to the NFL. Yeah, and we hope he doesn't pull a Tebow or something like that, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, yeah. But I think also it took into factor too. I mean, the um, the running back for Alabama, Bo Scarborough. He, I mean, he was out like in what the third or fourth quarter. So third that quarter. we don't know what would have happened had he stayed in it. He could have, you know, ran for their touchdown himself, and it would have been a different oh. story. If Bo Scarborough does, I mean, I guarantee Clemson players on the sideline watching him, um, you know, limp off mm. and praying to to whoever they pray to. Thank you. Thank you. Right. The entire game. That loss, I mean, if both Bo Scarborough's in there, they probably get another first, you know, one or two first downs. That changes the entire game for Clemson. Well, and I don't. And, uh, that was a really big deal. And I don't wish injury on anybody, but I wish that would have happened during my Husky game. <laughs> and I'm glad it happened to Romo, just saying. Yeah, I bet oh, you. <laughs> oh. Don't get her started. So, so, so hold up, Stephanie. You're a Dallas fan, but you don't like. You don't like Romo. No, no, no. I love Romo, and I think he did great for our team. What I'm saying is that it was a blessing the way it worked out for us this season. I'm mad supporting uh, definitely over Romo, but I'm happy the way the season ended up. See, I'm a, I'm actually a Romo fan, even though I hate the Cowboys, because y'all know I'm Thank a you. fan well. in some way, too. <laughs> but... I hate the Cowboys, but I actually really love Romo because I felt that he got such a raw deal all the time. Like, y'all asked that man to perform miracles, and he did it most of the time. But then after a while, just like with Alabama, he got tired. The shoulders got tired of carrying the entire team, and he threw a pick every now and then. Well, I don't think so it was. I, <laughs> I don't think it was just carrying the team and getting tired. I think he just would break <laughs> physically. <laughs> that man didn't have a full season for how many years? I mean, come on. I don't know. He was definitely getting <laughs> fragile. Uh, but to change gears a little bit, um, one thing I noticed too was I kind of wanted to get your take on this whole Grace and Allen thing. I noticed you had posted something on your um, on your guys's Instagram for Franchise Sports in regards to him. Uh, Duke playing in the um, Florida State game and, and losing to Florida State and basically him going after that ball, um, going into the Florida State bench and kind of pushing it. looked like one of the assistant coaches or something. What do you feel about Grayson Allen? Um, I feel he's lucky that that assistant coach wasn't named Reggie Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> he actually Grayson vouched Allen for him, too. All, he would have got all these hands. Like, Man. I don't understand how this dude has been just – He's, you know, this is what I feel about Duke. I've never been a Duke fan at all because I always felt like they were entitled and, you know, just a bunch of, you know, just, mm-hmm. just rich cats. You know, I just, I just never really liked them. And, and, and I mean, it's, I, I just, I just never been a, a Duke fan. Even when they, you know, I mean, the historic game with, you know, Michigan and, and uh. Duke. I was always going for Michigan and then North Carolina and Duke. I'm always going for North Carolina. Um, but I just feel like he's, you know, he's just a punk, man. You know, he. he Pushing, pushing the coach and then tripping players, yeah. he's going to run across the wrong dude and somebody is going to give him that work and Grayson Allen is going to feel the heat. And, and, and I hope somebody does because maybe that will check him and get him ready for life. But I don't I mean, really, I don't think Grayson Allen has too much of a, a career coming forward after this. I mean, he's not going to be an NBA star. He definitely, I wonder if he would be in the NBA rotation. Like, he's looking more and more like a dude who's going to be sitting next to Coach K. 
in about a year. He's going to be at Summer League for the next five years. Exactly. <laughs> this reminds me of a spoiled kid or something. Like, if he doesn't get his way, he acts out. I, I, I'm saying, and, and why is it taking Coach K so long? It took him so long to suspend him, and then he only suspended the board for one game. Like, I mean, after they lost to Virginia Tech, then he threw him right back in. And I got to start questioning Coach K because, I mean, if I'm a dude on that team, and if I have a kid on that team and he's talking about be accountable, be a man, I'm looking at him like, who are you talking to? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you didn't do nothing with Grayson Allen, and he was out here tripping cat and pushing coaches. Maybe there's some kind of, like, second cousin situation that we're not aware of. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <A-B. A-B. laughs> <laughs> oh man! The other thing that I noticed that um, on your on your guys on your podcast about two weeks ago, I think you or a week last week, you had mentioned the whole Giants trip to Miami boats live nightclub, which I've actually been to before. I mean, it's a great nightclub. Woo! If I could go there again, you know, and make a trip myself just for a day, I would definitely be doing it. Um, just not during the playoffs. Just not during the playoffs. And I get, I I kind of listened to your podcast in regards to that. I mean, I knew your approaches being, you know, these guys have a day off. They can do whatever they want. We all get that. And I believe that because I know in Seattle, the guys usually get Tuesdays off or something. Um, and most or you know, most of them are traveling and come back. But it's the playoffs. And it's playoff time. I, I, I get if you want to go to Miami and kick it for a day. But you want to go to Miami to kick it for a day or a day and a half maybe and come back. And you're in playoff mode. And, and yeah, they lost. But it wasn't just a loss. Like It wasn't like Victor Cruz and o- Odell Beckham did good. Both of them sucked. And yeah. both of them were in Miami. <laughs> yeah. With their shirts off at the beginning of the So game. how do you feel now that the whole game has been played out? Y'all, hold up. Was y'all mad about their shirts being off, though? No, not No, at definitely all. not. Huh? <laughs> you, know, you know, we have a segment called the Arms of the NFL. We are not far from doing biceps of basketball. <laughs> um, okay, so here's my deal. And, if, and like I said on my podcast, um, you know, before, I don't have a problem with cats going out and partying. you got a day off, you go do what you do. Because here's the thing. When I play ball, the coaches always say, don't change it up. Let's keep doing what we normally do. Now, I don't know if them cats normally on their day off go out and party or fly down to Miami or, or head out to Vegas real quick or do whatever. Mm-hmm. But if that's how they live and how they get it, keep getting it how you live and doing what you got to do. But the problem for, with me is when you go there and you go to Miami and be chilling on the boat and doing the whole deal. And, and I, my problem with the boat is why brothers wearing jeans and pants <laughs> on the water. I don't know why. Why are you going to Miami don't... with Tim's on, period? <laughs> but... And jeans, like, I, I know they are guaranteeing that they ain't got to prove they can swim. But otherwise, <laughs> otherwise what I, my problem is when you're going to go do that, okay, that's fine. Go do that. Go party. Go do what you do. You get back and you get ready to play. But then you have to ball. You have to back it up. Because once you don't back it up, then you are subject to getting, you know, what everybody's talking about. Yo, y'all went out there and lost your focus. And, and to, you know, to keep 100, like, I mean, the focus ain't going to change from seven days away. I mean, they went there on, on Monday and they played six days later. They, and they had time to focus and do what they do. But the problem is they created a distraction for the rest of the team. And then now the, other, the rest of the team has to answer these questions. Eli got to get out there and answer these questions when well, he ain't really good at answering questions. Ben <laughs> Patrick got to come out here and answer questions. And he, you know, he's barely even the, the head coach. He's just the head coach chilling. So right. you put distraction on all these cats, and now you come out here and y'all don't have a good game? Oh, man, you got to catch hell. And at least they're catching something because they sure didn't catch the ball. Right. So, <laughs> so, I mean, so didn't. And now coming this next season, that's going to be the whole talk going in. And, and for me, now I wonder – if Giants brass and fans are going to start wondering, is he worth the headache? Because you heard about my man banging his head in the wall. And right. The, the hole in the wall. Well, come on. No, no grown man, A, and should be doing all that, especially, oh. you know, mm-mm, sorry, that's not okay. Do it at your house, you know, destroy your own property. How about that? You know what I'm saying? Well, before we let you go, um, I know from what I sound like without giving our ages away, we we seem to be around the same era. And um, there was some news today in regards to um, Ice Cube's got starting this new Big Three. It's a basketball league for retired NBA players. It's going to start around June 24th. Um, They've got, I think, eight or ten teams of five. And some of the people that have already been interested are signed up. We've got, like... um, 
Steven Jackson, Richard Lewis, of course, as a Sonic fan, I'm down with that. Jermaine O'Neal from the Trailblazers. We had Kmart, Kenyon Martin, uh, White Chocolate, Mr. Jason Williams, Chauncey Billups from the Pistons, my boy. And then, of course, we got um, some of the coach players like Gary Payton and Al Iverson. I mean, I don't know about you, and I love ba- I mean, I don't love basketball like I used to back in these days, but I almost want to watch this right now more than anything else. <laughs> uh, you know what? I saw that, but then I thought, is it only going to be half court? Is it going to be half? Well, I guess three on three. Yeah, that's not going to be too good if it's half court. I don't think I researched yeah, that one. Who is, who, who the hell about to watch these old dudes play on a half court? <laughs> like... I mean, I want to see, you know, I want to see them having to run and get a sweat in and move, you know, move, yo, know, from from in line to in line. And I mean, to be true, like, it, only way I'm gonna watch is if they find a way to get Jordan. If they find a way to get Jordan, <laughs> I will. I mean, watch. I still want to see some passes from like Jason Williams. I wouldn't mind seeing some moves from Rashad. I mean, but my thing is that after watching Gary Payton on um, on set twenty one or KG's show, I realized he's really out of shape, and I think maybe Gary might be the person that made I requested that half court. If that's the case, <laughs> <laughs> short season if they use the whole court. <laughs> if they, you talking about you want to see White uh, Chocolate throwing passes? Them old dudes ain't gonna be ready for them passes. We're gonna see broken nose. <laughs> Real quick again, if you could give us, uh, our listeners, um, how to reach you, how to find you before we let you go. Yes, Talking Sports with the Franchise on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Punch Drunk Sports. Uh, Franchise Sports with a Z on Instagram and Twitter. I appreciate y'all ladies having me on. You guys got a great show here. Much love, much respect. Keep doing it. And uh, uh, when I get out to Vegas, I'll give y'all a hop. That's what we're talking about. Thank you. Have a good night. Be back. We just really, again, want to thank um, Reggie for joining us. We uh, had an awesome time interviewing him. Um, So before we go, we obviously need to get to our arms of the NFL. It is uh, divisional playoff weekend. I almost said wild card. Whoops, excuse me. So I did make this a little centered around some of the guys that are um, playing um, or have played for the teams coming that are playing currently. So for the first, we've got James Harrison. He's a linebacker for the Steelers, number 92. Steph, what was your reaction when you saw his arms? I said, dang! (laughs) <laughs> this guy's guy got some guns. Got some guns. Um, we also have Malcolm Butler, who's a cornerback at number 21. I usually don't want to bring up his name because he is the infamous guy who took our touchdown away in Super Bowl 49. But Malcolm Butler does have some nice arms. And um, a little honorable mention before I get to our <laughs> TBT. Um, I just want to, I don't know if you watched our, or have looked at our girl, post on Girl Chat, but uh, the ref from the uh, Alabama Clemson National Championship, this ref has some guns. Let's talk about him. <laughs> Ed Hochuli, if you're out out there please my mom is single she loves football you guys would have a lot in common <laughs> <laughs> oh man ed who chili has some guns boy so that's our new hashtag it would be refs arms of the nfl anyway and then back to our little tbt arms work done he was running back for tampa bay and atlanta since retired which ties me into my quick ah moment Work Done actually had um, part of the Work Done Foundation worked with the Habitat for Humanity home. And back in 2006, his foundation actually provided a brand new home to Deshaun Watson's family, uh, or or to Deshaun Watson's mother. Deshaun Watson, of course, is the quarterback for the Clemson Tigers, who are the national champions, um, and who also will be going into the NFL draft. So it's kind of crazy how... Things tie around. So, again, back in 2006, Deshaun, his mom, and his family received a new house and work done. Who'd have thunk that 10 years later this kid would be going into the NFL? And don't you think that basically, don't you think by him getting a stable home and a nice place to be able to live? And like he, when when I saw some of the clips, I mean, he was just a kid. He had his own room. He was able to kind of flourish. That probably led him to becoming this great guy that he is now and the great athlete. So I really think he's humble and he'll probably do good 
once he gets there. He's going to have his own foundation doing the same thing, which I hope for. And we really appreciate that in these guys that have these foundations that do give back and do put their money, that they their hard-earned money, because they do take some hard hits, into back into the community and to those in need. So shout out to them. Another uh, quick uh, moment. Um, Cam Newton had this awesome video letter to his son Chosen, who had just turned one over the holiday. Um, basically, it was called Be Better Than Me. Um, one of my favorite quotes was, don't be like me, son. Be better than me. You don't have to be an athlete to be accepted by me. You can be whatever whatever you want to be, but whatever you decide, I challenge you to be the best. Oh, that's I so know. sweet. Oh, I know. Well, sad news, yeah. unfortunately. We do have to report that Jordan Hankins, a sophomore at Northwestern, she was a basketball star at Lawrence North in Indianapolis, uh, was found dead on Monday. Unfortunately, they did determine that it was death due to a suicide. Ugh. So we definitely want to send our love and prayers to family and loved ones and uh, Northwestern. Uh, certainly sad news. So Definitely. Well, you know, mental health or whatever else may have been um, causing that, hopefully, uh, you know, it's a big, big thing that's happening and we just need to be aware of it and help support each other and any friends or family that you know that are going through anything, definitely want to look into some resources and referrals for them. But anyways, so we really appreciate you guys joining in with us this podcast this week. Uh, we can't wait for next week. We've got another great guest lined up for you, so stay tuned. Stephanie, how are they going to find you? You can find me at, at underscore, excuse me, S underscore Washington. <laughs> and you can find me at Seattle, the number four underscore life. You can also find us at Girl Chat Sports on all social media, as well as Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So until next week, we will catch you later. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks for checking out another great episode of Girl Chat Sports. And remember, we don't have balls, but we know how to cover them. Until next time, guys.